G'day mates and welcome back to the Unreal World. So I was, you can sort of see the long straight line there of a trap fence that I was sort of gradually building uh, up in my spare time. I was doing it off camera, but a caparil, one of those those flying birds came up and I shot a couple of bow. I thought, you know what the hell, it's um, pull my bow out and have a few shots. I had a whole bunch of arrows, so if, even if I lost a couple, it didn't matter me too much. So I took three shots at it and the third shot appears to have hit it. So I thought, oh shit, I better start recording right away. So we're going to run up there. It's not actually dead. It's unconscious. It could uh, recover before I get up there. So I'm going to start running by pressing Shift R. I believe that works. Uh, tell if I was actually in the game, not out on my recording window. Hope I haven't done anything with Shift R. Probably not. Shift R, we're now going to start running. I'm going to sprint up here as quick as I can. Shit, it's waking up. Um... I might have to actually stop running and shoot another. Uh, is that thing dead? Just give me a second. I'm going to have a quick look at this thing. Uh, it's still it's still unconscious. I'm actually going to keep running at it. I thought the blood had disappeared briefly. Okay, I'm now going to actually punch it by kicking zero. I can kick it in the face. Uh, or in this case, on the skull. I'm going to stomp on its head. And it's dead. So I hit it. It was sort of wounded on the ground. Like... I ran up and smashed Ted down. So we now have ourselves a caparil thingy. So I can pull up the arrow. That carcass has been harmed. I mean, it's been hit. It's a bird. It's 10 pounds. So it's a decent sized bird, like a turkey or something. And it's been hit by an arrow and then stomped on the head. So the body is not going to be in pristine condition. And the leather we're going to get out of it is not going to be spectacular either. Uh, where are the rest of my arrows gone? I think that's one of them there. And another one went up here somewhere. I will track those down later. The other thing worthwhile talking about is the fact that the color is a little different. You'll notice that the snow has begin to, begun to melt. I woke up. It's only been basically one day since I started doing the off-screen stuff. And this morning when I woke up, it's now currently evening. So I've been digging holes all day, trying to fill in these gaps with a wooden shovel that takes a long, long time in the frozen earth. I should probably wait until summer uh, or later spring before I start digging because it's it's very, very hard to dig through at the moment. It takes uh, about six hours. But you can see everything now is starting to melt. So I can no longer ski. I actually took off my skis. It, uh, it pops up with a little thing down here that skiing gives me nothing. What I am going to do though is pick up this body. And uh, we'll head up this way so I can find that. There's one of those arrows. Grab that one. And I cannot see the other one. It could have broken or it could have just gone flying indefinitely off in some funny direction. Doesn't matter, let's head back here and start. Oh, I'm still running, huh. there we go. I'm too tired to actually move at the moment. Just start walking back and normally at a nice leisurely pace. Now, this is still ice to my understanding, but I wouldn't want to spend too long walking out here because it'll be very, very thin ice at this point. I don't know why it's blue, but apparently it's sort of partially see-through. We can see the water underneath it now melting. So let's get over here and actually start butchering this animal. So I'm going to drop, let's drop it here. Drop the, where is that body? Drop you there. And I'm now going to butcher the carcass to my left. Use our knife and what are we going to get? We're going to get eight cuts of meat and some far out. Far, I want to say some different words. I forgot to skin the carcass. I hate this game sometimes. If this was not, if this was not a permadeath game with an, with an ongoing save, I would completely reload that. But unfortunately, guys, I stuffed that up. I forgot to I forgot to skin it, and now somehow I've cut all the skin off, and it's now useless. I should have skinned it beforehand. I find that to be pretty annoying. It's actually the first time I've ever done that. So. Stuff that one up. I'm not going to be getting any leather today. I was about to show you guys how to make some nice leather, but that is not going to be happening. On the plus side, on the plus side, we do have eight cuts of meat that we've now got here. Uh, eight caparil cuts, and we've got some meat here. I wonder if I can actually render the fowl. I wonder what that does. There is a... Because I've got the self-sufficiency mod on, so let's actually have a quick look in here. And... There's a baking recipe. There you go. Render fat. So there's a few different uh, things we can do in here. We can bake hard biscuits. We can, are there any porridges? Nothing spectacular there. Meat, nope, nothing new there. Fish, nothing new there. 
How about vegetable recipes? It looks like nothing spectacular. Roast vegetables might be nice. Uh, and then brewing is nothing there. So let's have a quick look at what rendering fat does. It apparently is a baking thing. We require some fat, which I should have there. We don't have enough fat, unfortunately. Nowhere near enough. And you, of course, need water and a cooking pot, which I do not have either. Oh, I mean, water everywhere. No cooking pot, though. So it looks like I'm just going to roast that fat. I'll just drop down all these twigs that I'm carrying, my little portable fire. Drop those there and build myself a little bit of fire. So rather unfortunate we didn't manage to get any skin out of it because I stuffed up big time. I am... Uh, something running around the east. Looks like there's something out there. Unfortunately, we're quite tired. This is not the time to start following it out. Um, I'm just going to instead cook and we have to just roast everything. So I'll roast the cuts, all 10 of them, or all eight of them. And we will roast the fat as well. Delicious, delicious fat. Uh, let's wait a little bit and not, not yet. There you go, everything is ready. Let's eat ourselves some beautiful roasted fat. Now, fat is actually surprisingly good for nutrition. It gives you a lot of energy, uh, despite not taking back very much hunger. So that's pretty handy. I do need to eat these pikes, though. Pike, I believe, is not particularly good as a source of nutrition compared to some of the other fish. So it's very filling. It's a big fish. The actual nutrition it gives you is not spectacular. Now... Yeah, can't see anything out here. I think at this point we're not going to be able to track them down. I'll need to keep building this trap fence. What I was planning on doing with it was sort of cutting off their access to water. I didn't want to go too far north because I figured uh, it's probably not going to come too close to my camp now that they know I'm here. But all the areas down here, I could put in a couple of little holes, which I was in the process of digging, and I can turn those holes into trap pits. Now, it takes a fair bit of effort and time to build all of these, so I haven't built a very large area just yet, but I figured... Having a starting one like that would just provide me a little bit of coverage. Hopefully the things will come along. They'll, they can't climb, so they'll walk along the edge of the fence, trying to get through, and then they'll step through it and fall into my trap. And hopefully they will be trapped there and I can actually come back and poke them to death at my leisure. Uh, and that's basically the best way to get any sorts of um, uh, things like leather and, and reliable meat later in the game. Again, I don't want to set up a permanent base here, so I don't want to make a spectacularly long... Oh, okay, I'm apparently in the ice region, so I have to move out to get... Oh, hang on, I just saw a feather. Excellent, I need those feathers to make more uh, to make more things. So now the feathers are dropping, that's very good. Keep an eye out for these birds here. Either way, either way, that is sort of the end of this. Let's head off to bed and see what we can do. There was nothing else really interesting here. I was hoping that I would be able to show you... Uh, some interesting things with that with regards to making leather and we can move on to the metalworking, but I stuffed it so <laughs> Not much we can do there. Let's continue on though I'm thinking maybe hunting birds might be a little more viable than I thought because I didn't realize my uh, Bow skill is not that bad. I'm used to characters that have terrible terrible bow skill sort of down like 25% or something 44% is not horrific especially when you consider the fact that we have a northern bow, which I believe is a better than standard bow. It's a very strong bow, and I think it's quite accurate. Maybe. I know the juniper bows are less accurate than normal. They're the little ones you can make yourself. Juniper bows and short bows are less accurate than standard. Long bows, I think, have... How does it work? It's been a, it's been a long, long time since I studied everything, but I think long bows are less accurate and have more power. Whereas these composite bows have good power and good accuracy. The northern bows are very, very effective. Let's have a quick look here. Mm. No, nothing spectacular here. There's some informational stats on it. But I do believe it's a strong bow. So perhaps what we can do is sneak up on some little birdies in the area. We know there's a couple of caparils around here. So finding something might be an interesting idea that way I can go hunting. So I'm going to do a bit of a run around, I'm going to speed it up and time lapse it as I tend to do when there is very little happening with very little to talk about and we will see if anything comes up or not.
Here's some interesting news. Looks like a stag has actually been running around on our um, around our camp here. It's been right in. So I wonder if I wonder if I can see them if they're falling through the ice yet. If they're out there somewhere. Uh, this could have been from a while back. That was the problem. It's hard to tell. I'm walking a little bit on the ice here, but it shouldn't be too bad. But as far as I can see, there is nothing out there just yet. If I could force them to go out there, though, they would be they would be prime pickings. So. At this point, it's just luck. I really don't have the setup to catch anything. So, I suppose staying in this area, I can't really see anything. And I don't want to walk out into the center because I don't think I will. Yeah, I don't know if the ice is strong enough to hold me too much further from the shore. Either way, not looking like we're finding anything. Let's continue building these holes and getting the trap stuff all set up. Okay, excellent, excellent news. There is an elk or something or the stag is on our, uh, it's not a trap pit, it's just a hole at this point. So I should have actually set the trap up there and the guy would fall into it. But we definitely know that it is working. Let's see if we can hide. We are currently hiding. I've got a bow ready and I've got an arrow in my other hand. So you can see number two, that allows me to shoot one arrow without having to actually draw it out. So I can shoot immediately on the same frame. So I could attempt to shoot from here um, is the thing running? Is the thing running? It looks like it's actually running. It is an escaping stag, so it appears to have seen me. Although I'm currently... Currently hidden. Uh, um, I just want to keep it at the length of my vision. Because being further out makes it a little hard for me to see what's going on here. Simply because of the resolution of my screen. It's unfortunate, but... I don't seem to be able to... Uh, I think I've lost it. Well, there is a bird up there as well. I'm still currently hidden. So that bird, although it's running away, I might be able to take a few shots at it as well. If I can get close enough and get a clear line of sight. So the bird is just there. Again, it's dark, so it's hard to see. Uh, please don't notice me. Uh, something has seen me. So that bird has seen me. Is it going to do anything though? Yeah, it's going away and I can't shoot through these trees. Chances of me hitting these to get to that bird are pretty high. So unfortunately, I'm not going to get that bird. I don't think if I can just get through it a little bit. Maybe I'll take one shot. I mean, I've got enough arrows to spare. That didn't work very well at all. Let's draw another arrow from our quiver and take a shot. The bird hasn't moved. Yeah, not happening now. That bird knows what's going on. It's a smart bird. So we'll pull, we'll grab our arrow back and see if I can find that other one. I don't want to keep losing them. If I lose one every time, then we have ourselves a bit of a problem. Um, fortunately, I think I've lost that arrow. It's no big, oh, there it is right in front of me. I'll grab that one and we're good. So there we go. Couple of shots at a bird, didn't quite get it in time. Most unfortunate. We do need to keep leveling up our skill. Hopefully our uh, our bow skill will level up. Now that we have got a good bow, or now that I've remembered we've got a good bow, perhaps that will give us a good chance. The question now we need to think about is how do we make these into traps to stop this thing? We need to turn it into a, uh, I've got a trap fence, I don't need that. I need to build a trap pit. You can do it with sharp stakes, which will kill them or injure them severely, but also damage the skin. The trap pit itself, as far as I'm aware, will trap them indefinitely. They cannot escape from it. So it really is no negative to going a trap pit. It means you have to walk up and, and kill them yourself. And if it's a bear or something, that can be a problem. Now, <clears throat> uh, shooting them with a bow when they're in a trap pit, I believe is quite difficult. I think it models the fact that they're at a lower height. So it's difficult to get a good angle of shot on them, even though they're right in front of you. Uh, but you can sort of walk up, stab them, and walk back 
and just keep stabbing them back and forth and hopefully they will face the other way occasionally. So we need to build a trap pit. Now what does that require? It requires three slender trunks, ten branches and ten spruce trigs. That might have been part of the reason I was carrying so many trig twigs. So let's grab, wrong button, let's grab a bunch of twigs from here. I need ten of them. There's ten there. I'm going to need spruce ones, which is these here. So let's repeat that action and get, uh, let's grab all of them at this point. And I'm going to need slender trunks, which I think are this tree here. So let's fell this one. Excellent. So push you to the left, all of you. Push you down, all of you, although I only really need three. And let's make a trap pit, which is five. Make a trap pit to the left here. Um, yes, I am going to abort that task because I can equip myself with an arrow. Missed. And it looks like we've lost our arrow straight out on the ice. I could risk it, but I don't know how far away that's going. That's unfortunate. Doesn't matter. Let's continue building. Okay, so we've got ourselves here a trap pit. Now, I don't want to walk on that. If I walk on that, I will fall in it myself and uh, you know break a leg or injure myself on the way down. So I do not want to do that. We have ourselves one trap pit. It's not much, but uh, assuming they come through here again and not on one of these further south ones, we will actually be able to come back in the morning and hopefully, hope to God, that bloody, uh, bloody stag has fallen in there. That would be a real benefit to us. Okay, let's eat, sell, eat something and go to bed. Okay, something in the distance has woken us up and it looked like it was just that bird out there. We saw some movement as the sun was on our eyes. It is late morning, so we've slept in a bit. Ah, uh, bolt task, yes. I want to instead wield an arrow. So I'm drawing the arrow, but I'm just going to wait for the time being. No, it's going out further. I don't want to go out too far. No, it's risky. Really don't want to go out too far. So let's continue eating our stale roasted trout or pike, whatever the hell that thing was. And that uh, will be good. So even if I fall into the ice here on the edge, I should be able to just break my way through to the shore and build a fire. So it looks like nothing's fallen over night time. Our trap skill is, uh, where's trapping? Is 12, so it's still pretty low. So quite possibly this just looks like a giant gaping hole and the, and the thing can see that it's just a bunch of twigs and branches. We haven't covered it up very well is our problem. So I don't think our trapping skill is going to be quite good enough for what we're trying to do. Either way, let's get a couple more uh, branches and stuff like that and continue building. Alrighty guys, we got it. We actually hit one of them at a decent range as well. So I was quite impressed with it. I didn't actually expect to do that. Grab this arrow. We've got another harmed carcass. I will actually pick this one up again. Um, and I want to continue building this thing. I sort of got halfway through two or three times. So we will uh, continue building this trap pit. We're nearly done. It only takes about half an hour or so. Uh, I'm not going to abort the task. Let's just finish this off. I uh, would have liked to have, ooh, don't walk in that trap, no. Would have liked to have grabbed that uh, bird that was flying off to our east again. Interrupted me yet again. But we've got this one here, and that should be sufficient. I will eat our food. and We need to run out of food, actually. So let's head back here. We're going to need to do a few things. We need to skin. We have to absolutely make sure we skin this carcass before we go any further. So I'm going to drop the bird here. 
and uh, hide working is H. So Alt H, we have to skin the animal first. Okay, so I've skinned it. I now have a fine black grouse skin. On top of that, now I can now butcher the animal to my west. And we gained uh, two edible cuts of black grouse meat and some black grouse fat. So this is a much smaller animal than the caparil, which was a kind of like a turkey thing, flying turkey. This one here is just like a, I guess it's a two pound animal. So it's like a crow or something or a big crow. I don't know exactly what we're looking at. If you guys are European, you probably know what black grouse are. I suppose even the Americans probably know what it is. I'm an Australian, I know what a kookaburra is, a kangaroo, and that's about the limit of my animal knowledge. Either way, we're now going to clean the skin, and do I de-hair it first? I forget how we do this, de-hair this thing, because I want to make uh, leather. Uh, nope, okay, clean the skin first. So we're going to clean all the juicy bits off, and it's actually a fine skin, which is really nice. Uh, yes, I know, I'm not abort the task, you can keep flying around. So we have a, a clean, fine black grouse skin, which is great because our hide working is not spectacular and this was a, a reasonably damaged body. It was a very small bird and had a giant arrow hole through it. So I'm, I'm quite impressed that we managed to actually uh, clean it up fairly well. I want to dehair it, which is, I don't think, necessary. No, apparently it is necessary. So I'm going to dehair it. And that's going to take two more days to completely dehair it and allow us to make leather. I was under the impression that birds automatically automatically make leather anyway, but I don't want to stuff this up. So if I end up with a fur, or the game considers a fur, even if it is an animal a uh, bird skin, then uh, then we will have a problem. So let's go to sleep. Uh, Hungry is a bear and unity with the world. So yeah, unity with the world that will pop up occasionally, uh, and it will mean I can learn a new. Uh, ritual and unfortunately I've already had the unity with the world once and I will not get any more ritual skills <clears throat> until I go up and speak to a shaman who can teach me more detail on how to learn this uh, sacrifice for a newly killed animal is actually one we should probably consider doing let's do the sacrifice and let's give up one of these black grouse cuts so you gently set it on the, on the ground as a sacrifice that I think will increase our unity not that we really need it because we're still doing really well, but as a bit of a, uh, a role-playing thing, we're going to set that grouse aside if the gods have given us uh, bounty and food, or the spirits have given us bounty and food. In the meantime, let's eat the rest of this crappy pike and some of our nice cuts that we've got here. I'm going to... no, not two more days. It's still going to take quite a while for the skin to... Uh, to sort of de-hair, and then I can continue the leather making process. I'm going to require a few other things, but we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, let's go down and see if anything has been caught in here overnight. I don't think any animals are going to be stupid enough to fall into our traps, but if they do... No, it looks like nothing's come up. If they do fall in, at least we will have our food sorted for the indefinite future. Either way, things are, things are sort of ticking along nicely. The episode is going along, and I think this is a good place to call it an end. Uh, has anything fallen in the water out here in the ice? Uh, I don't want to go out too far because it's going to be pretty thin and weak out there. But no, it doesn't look like anything has fallen in, which is unfortunate. It looks like there's a fair bit of animal activity over on this side as well. Old stag things. You notice as well that it's harder to see the stag marks now because there's no more snow. Snow's the easiest to track them in, which is why I was so keen to try to chase down that stag last time. Now here, it's really only the mud near the edge. And then over here, once we get further inland, it's much, much harder to see the tracks at all. I can get maybe a couple of them just near me, and they're quite faint. Yeah, old stag tracks. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're unlikely to be able to track them too much. You know, I got lucky, got a couple over here. So this may be softer ground, but unlikely to be able to follow them for too long. So if I can get out of here, it would be spectacular. Then I think this is when we call the episode. So come back next time, guys. We're going to be doing a little bit of leather tanning. And that allows us, I think, to move into some uh, metal work. I'd probably even get a better shovel so I can build a better a metal uh, trap fence. That would be spectacular because it looks like our charcoal is done. And we've got here 25 pounds of it. So it's like one piece of charcoal becomes one pound. Sorry, one piece of timber becomes one pound of charcoal, which is... Uh, no, it doesn't. It was 75 pounds of wood, I think, we required, which comes down to 25 pounds. So we lose... 
uh, two thirds of the, the weight of the wood, and we end up making 25 pounds worth of charcoal, which is pretty good. That's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. That's reasonably efficient. I think even more efficient than a real life. Anyway, guys, I've been Bielek said This has been Unreal World. Come back next time as we start making a little bit of leather and get some tongs prepared and move forward in the metal crafting.